Okay, to find the inverse of a function algebraically, we're going to look kind of at four steps. Today we're going to focus on the first three. We're going to focus on actually how to find the inverse and then tomorrow we're going to work on testing the inverse using composition of functions. So let's look at these steps. First step is we're going to take a function and we're going to replace the function notation f of x with the value y. So we're just replacing f of x with y. Then we're going to, step two is we're going to switch the x and the y positions. So x and y just switch positions just like we have reversed the order of the ordered pairs up here. And then we're going to solve the new equation for y and that will give us the inverse function. So right below here we have our first example. So let me jot it down up here. I'm going to zoom back out. See so if we have a better screen here to work with. Okay, so f of x is, let me slide this down for you, is equal to 4x plus 5. So that is our original equation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the f of x with y. So all I'm going to do is take it out of function notation and back to traditional x and y values. Okay, now I'm going to switch my x and my y values or positions, the variables. So x will be where the y is and y will be where the x is. Okay, so all we did now is switch. Now the last step is just to solve the equation for y. So now you just get the y by itself. So first thing you're going to do is subtract 5 from both sides. So you get x minus 5 equals 4y, and then we divide both sides by 4, divide by 4, divide by 4, and so our new equation just simplifies to x minus 5 over 4 equals to y, and that would be the inverse function, okay? Now we are going to go back and replace this y with a different notation to show that it's the inverse. To show that it's the inverse, we're going to write f, but it's not the f of x functions, it's its inverse. So we're going to use the notation x to the negative 1. That just notates that that is an inverse function, and it's going to be x minus 5 over 4. Okay, so instead of just being plain f of x is equal to the function, we're going to have f to the negative 1 x is equal to the function. And that is how we write our final answer, and that's how we find the inverse of the first one. Now, to check it, that's what we're actually going to do tomorrow. But what you would do to check it, and I'll just kind of just give you a little tidbit for tomorrow, you would take this original function, or this uh, inverse function, and plug it back into the original function, for x and then solve it and simplify it and see what you get. Now we'll learn tomorrow what you get but you should just simplify down simply to the value x and that would be your inverse function. That's how we're going to check it tomorrow. So checking it would be the last step. Now pull out your note sheet. We're going to flip and do the next problem, the next example. Okay so the next example is g of x is equal to one third x plus two fifths. Okay, so this one has some fractions in it. So let's talk about how to work with fractions. Well, first of all, we're going to do the same step. We're going to place g of x with y, because that's the name of our function. And then we're going to solve it, or actually switch, right? We're going to take x and y and switch positions. So x is equal to one third y plus two-fifths, okay? Now we just simply solve for y. So get the y by itself by subtracting two-fifths from both sides. Now I'm actually going to use what I call transposing, which when you move something to the other side, it just makes it a negative. Okay, so I brought this two-fifths over and it becomes a negative two-fifths. And then I'm dividing by three, so I'm going to multiply by both sides by three to get rid of that one-third. So the final answer would be 3x minus and 3 times 2 fifths is 6 fifths and the, the side all cancels out so it's equal to y. 
So here's my inverse function. Now let's talk about how to write that. We started with g of x. So we're going to write g to the negative 1x is equal to 3x minus 6 fifths. And that would be the inverse function. Okay, so that's how you undo a linear function that has some fractions in it. Okay, so let's try one, the next problem. It's actually got a cube in it. So let's look at the cubic. Okay, this one is h of x is equal to 8x cubed minus 1. So we have a cubic function here. Now same thing, first step, replace h of x with the value y. So we're taking out a function notation. Now we're going to switch your x and the y. And you just simply replace it even with the cube. Okay, now we get the y by itself. So we're going to add 1 to both sides. So x plus 1 is equal to 8y cubed. Okay, now we need to do what? Divide by 8, right? So that this side, the a cancels. And then to do undo a cube, what do we do? We have to do a cube root. So we're going to take the cube root of the left and the cube root of the right. Well, when you, when you cube root a cube, you just get the y out. And then over here, we've got cube root of this fraction. Well, 8 is a perfect cube. The cube root of 8 is just 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So I'm going to simplify the denominator just down to 2. And then I'm going to have the cube root of x plus 1 on top. Now that one won't simplify, and it's actually all one group. It's all underneath that cube. So there's our final answer. Now, when we go to write that, Remember, we're going to take it out of this x and y notation and switch it back to function notation. The original function was h. So we're going to have h to the negative 1 of x is equal to the cube root of x plus 1 all under the radical over 2. So there we go. So there's our inverse function. Now, let's try that last one. This one we're given this time something a little bit different. We're actually given a root, a square root. So let's look at our function notation. Function notation f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 4. Notice that's all under the radical plus 3. Okay, remember our steps. First replace f of x with y and then we're going to switch positions with x and y. So it's going to be x is equal to the square root of 4 minus y plus 3 on the outside. Okay, to get the y by itself, we're going to have to move this 3 first. So let's subtract 3. And that leaves us with y minus 4 all under the radical. Now how do you get rid of this radical? Because I can't pull the 4 out yet. It's still in that radical. You have to square both sides. Ooh, that's kind of fancy. Okay, so you, when you square a square root, the square root cancels and you're just left with y minus 4. Okay, is equal to x minus 3 quantity squared. So we've got that binomial squared over there. Now we're almost there. All we need to do is get rid of the 4. So it's minus 4, so I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So this stays in one group, x minus 3. And then I'm going to have plus 4 is equal to y. Okay, there's my inverse function. Here it is. It's x minus 3 quantity squared plus 4. Now remember, I need to take it out of the, this uh, notation and flip it back to the function notation. Now by now you should know our original function was f of x. So since this is the inverse, f to the negative 1x is our notation. x minus 3 squared plus 4. Bada boom, bada bang, we are finished. Okay, so that's how you find the inverse function. Now at the bottom of your page you've got a couple examples. Go ahead and try to find the inverse of each one of those. So you've got your your turn problems. So give those a try and check those in the course. So good luck to you and hope this video was helpful.